Hi, this is Phil Patempa, your host for another edition of Of Notoriety. And on the marquee, we have plenty to chat about for today's day. We are already into what is the midst of June. And each week, we bring you everything you want to make sure you mark on your calendar, what you don't want to miss. And, of course, this is the broadcast version of all of the newspaper columns that you can read in print editions of the Post Tribune. Or perhaps you'll find it uh, captured at ChicagoTribune.com or in the Chicago Tribune Media Publications. We're just so glad that you are with us as we come to you from our Strachan Van Til Studios in Hammond. Some of you are tuned into our traditional radio airwaves, others through the magic of our Jed TV. That gives you the inside look with our cameras, and we hope that you are a subscriber for everything that's happening here in the studio. And we would not be here without our generous underwriters, the folks at People's Bank, the NA Arts Commissions. They're the ones that make this broadcast possible. We have a returning guest today, so the conversation you are going to be hearing unfold, and that voice you're going to hear as well as who you're going to see, hopefully. If you found <laughs> us on your social media feed, perhaps, or you're seeing us in a Facebook feed, or if this is even a rebroadcast, this is the voice and also the smile of the one and only T. Harriman, a favorite, favorite author. She is somebody <laughs> that always has a surprise around every corner. This one is not just a surprise, but it's the launch of a second book, popular the series. She was on, I was going to say, it was right around the holidays, not this year, but a year ago. So more than a year, about a year and a half, we are due to have her back, and she's back. She's driven upstate to be with us in studio. Burn This Book was the book that we talked about the last time. It is uh, certainly going to draw your eye right to it. You look at the cover of this, you see a White House on fire. Not just any White House, but the White House. You see two folks that are kind of uh, on the run, and there is a cat that is being gripped right in the arms of one of the characters. This is T. Harriman's first work, and again, it, it, it for this popular series, and now we have one that is just about ready to hit. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, my gosh, Phil. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. And I really you, appreciate it. You always sort of brighten things up, and we welcome summer, and this feels like summer right here at this desk. You've transformed our studio, <laughs> and we're so happy here at WJOB and Jed TV. We just came from the Munster Chamber lunch. We got to catch up a little bit there, but we didn't talk too much because I wanted to save it for the conversation to unfold with our listeners and our viewers. So tell us about the new book, the title, and when it's going to hit. Okay. The new book is called... All hail Queen of the Freaks, and it is uh, it's targeted for middle schoolers and high schoolers. But uh, honestly, half of my readers are say over twenty five. Sure. So I always say I am I write for young thinkers. So really, anybody would be able to enjoy it. My dad read read this one. I hand this right off to my dad. My dad is 94, or just about 94, a couple of weeks away. And I just remember as he was reading this a year and a half ago, he kept saying, this is such a, an odd book. This is such a strange <laughs> book. I'm trying to follow and connect it. And you know what? You held his interest. You got him all the way through because he wanted to see what was going to happen, what was going to unfold. Oh, my gosh. So that's tell me, amazing. Is, the, is the, the second title, is it really linked with crossover as a continuous this series or no, you, you've started on a whole new vein with different characters. These are completely different characters, uh, but eventually the world will the that world will dovetail with it that will. one as well. It's the same universe, and and there are nods to this book in All Hail Queen of the Freaks. Um, All Hail Queen of the Freaks has a lot more um, Indiana references uh, to it. And it's inspired much more by Indiana references. Well, and, you know, one of the things we have a common friend, not just a friend for you, but I know uh, you've often said mentor, Kate yeah. Collins, she did the same thing, and it works so well with that formula and those ingredients when you give a nod and carefully disguise what is right here in our northwest Indiana and oh. in our region, which is what you've done as well, and it works so well with her with a number of her, her different book series. And uh, truly, you, you've, you've given credit to her to kind of inspiring your own works, right? Oh, absolutely. I would not be here if, if it weren't for Linda. Oh, so. That's oh, no. right. Kate Collins. Kate Collins. Kate Collins. Collins. Kate yes, Collins. Kate Collins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she is, I mean, she taught me where to put attribution. It is extraordinarily difficult to, um, uh, to learn how to become an author. There's yeah. really no... I mean, you can take college courses on creative writing, but uh, nobody really will teach you how to the actual job of 
uh, be, you know, a small business. Um, I spend half of my time writing every day and half of my time on business every day. Oh, yes. And then in addition, I have, um, you know, an, uh, Instagram, TikTok, a little bit of Facebook. Sure. Um, and YouTube that I yeah. keep going as well, too. All of it has changed so much in the world of, of publishing, and, and you're right. It, it is. It's a double-edged sword. It's a blessing and a curse. Those of you that are, you know, they say, oh, there's one book in everybody, and everybody wants to write that dream book. It is It is more difficult, but also at times it can be. It can also be an easier task, easier task being the vein of I'm going to self-publish. That wasn't always an, an option out there because it was such an expensive process. Now you can self-publish, and, and that is certainly a way to do it. And, you know, if you go viral, you do enough of your own marketing and promotion, you can get those books into the hands of people, or again, it can be a download and it can be a virtual book. But if you're going to be underneath the umbrella of a publisher, and you do have your, – yours is with a publisher, as as is with Kate Collins and, and myself. In those regards, then – it's tough. It's tough because they have so many options, and we know that the publishing industry has changed so much just by the fact of the mathematics and the formula of to publish something with the cost of paper and print and distribution. So a lot of that promotion to get the word out has become easier because we can take control of social media, use that as our tool. We're our own, own marketing machines. But, boy, that is also a job that never, ever ends because you're having to manage your followers. You're having to manage all of that, correct? Absolutely. Uh, and, in fact, since we were just at the Munster Chamber of Commerce, what, and we started off by saying sure. that I think you get some of your funding from the Indiana Arts Council. That's right. Um, I uh, Just this year, I won a creative entrepreneur ex, uh, hmm. accelerator fellowship from the Indiana Arts Council. Commission. I'm sorry. I think I said it. Yeah, you know. Yep. Correct. Indiana yes, Arts know. Commission. And so um, I really was stunned mm -hmm. by how much free money there was yes, out there. Yes, there is. Yeah, uh, just from the state of Indiana. So if anybody's interested in doing any kind of uh, arts, having your own arts business out there, be mm -hmm. it writing. Um, it can be an organization or it can be a project composers. such as this. If you, yeah. you want to apply for that, that project, that's what that money is set aside for. Of course, it comes from all the taxpayers, but it's helping further arts and culture. And that's what makes this broadcast help as a portion of the proceeds that come from that grant are used for this as a, well as People's Bank helping in. And, and Jim D. Lowen and WJLB and Jed TV as well. And that's what's of um, broadcasting helping underwrite because it is. It, it's a costly operation for all of these things. And at the end of the day, you know, people think, oh, you know, uh, it seems so romantic to be a publisher, right? It's it's tough. You've got to really be out there pushing and marketing and selling all the time, which is why I, I love when I can when I can have our author guest here speak to students and let them know a little bit about the the inside track. How long did it take then for this book project? I love to always try to to see what the timeline is for authors. Uh, it's it. I think it is different for everyone. Uh, as you know, Phil, I come from a journalism background. Um, and so um, it is, I believe that, and I know I'm probably going to get a lot of angry messages from people, but I believe mm -hmm. that there is no such thing as writer's block. I think it's a cover term for un other underlying yeah. difficulties. But I am, I think I would probably win this bet, Phil, if mm -hmm. I said that you had ever um, said to yourself, oh, you know, I have a deadline. You know, I uh, I bet you've never said, oh, I have a deadline in 30 minutes and yeah. I'm just not inspired, I guess. And right. so they, I <laughs> bet they just, did they just run a little paper <laughs> saying, Phil had writer's yeah. block? Yeah. No, no, no. It, it, it has never, to, yeah. Yeah. And it's got to, now you're right, there can be some procrastination, but once you just kind of start putting on the old fashioned expression, pen to paper, or just start yeah. pounding it out, you can massage it, you can come back, copy paste, you can figure it out, but. You're right. There's always an idea. There's something that's waiting, waiting to be born. Uh, for those of you that are tuned in through Jed TV, or maybe you're just turning in through our dial, or in your social media feed, and you've seen what is the the bright and colorful studio that we have here. <laughs> that is because we have T. Harriman here, and this is an, an author who always has a smile, extra energy, and something <laughs> exciting in the works. In this case, it is a brand new book that is about to to, to launch here. We're getting the, the scoop first. The title of the book. All hail, Queen of the Freaks. And the time that you can probably get it in your hands through Amazon or your favorite platform is probably around when? It will be, the book will launch on July 15th. And if you tune into 
um, your social, and if you turn into your socials, mm-hmm. uh, we are doing a character dress fashion show oh. on July 15th, and you will see fun. my characters come to life. Oh, that is fun. So there's yes. some marketing. That That is really innovative. And that what, what platform are you going to use for that then for people to tune in? Um, I, I tend to enjoy, well, I, I think probably in, uh, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and yeah. um, uh, TikTok. Uh, can I uh, maybe give you uh, the hand, the my social? Uh, Absolutely. We can maybe put my socials on the bottom. Absolutely. We certainly can because when, when we Facebook this, we can always put it out there and we'll make sure we attach it to there as well Great. and get the word out. You bet. You bet. I'll email that to you tonight. I'll <laughs> have Tony Panic, our producer, help us out. Tony, okay. have you been wondering throughout the first part of this segment, as I yeah. have, what is this small blue thing that is let me in get front the, of me? Let me get the camera. And what? On and, yeah. and is this something that's connected, or is this just to to match the shirt that I have to wear today? Oh, here? I didn't think about that. Tell us about this smiling guy. That Mr. Phil Potempa is a narwhal, and um, I li- whenever I do TikToks, I like to put um, I like to put the um, uh, uh, this is Larry. Uh, and I like to put him in the background because just for something fun and silly and that kind of thing. And just to show that, that I, you know, not to take things yeah. too seriously. Yeah. Because when you open up one of my books, I want to show you a good time. I want you <laughs> to have a, you know, a portable vacation. Uh, yeah. The ancient Greeks said that tragedy was the highest art form. And maybe that's true, but. That's not me. You know, I believe that, you know, you know people need an escape. Yes. Life is hard. They need to have fun. Absolutely. Uh, and so, it, uh, you know, little Larry here kind of, uh, uh-huh. kind of hopefully sets the tone for all of for that. For those tuning into our traditional radio uh, airway dials of what we're describing here in front of me, and, and everybody knows that I'm, I'm big and always having some props here so we can di- <laughs> differentiate what is the, the show from show so nothing always looks exactly cookie cutter the same. It's a small stuffed blue whale here, but the special type, a type that really does exist or did exist at least, that has the ivory um, horn, right? Basically yeah, a horn. Yeah, narwhal. Yeah, yeah, that protrudes right from the forehead and Gosh, now this is horrible. I can't remember if these, I hope it's not the case, but if these have gone extinct or, or if they're not. still around. But this is a, a true uh, type of whale, and so this one has gotten a name apparently, Larry, right? This is Larry, yes. And, and again, it's a special type of a whale. So it's here, so one of the focal points, as well as the books from the the last popular series from T. Harriman's visit here the last time around, and now we have this brand new book that is coming out. Another question I like to ask all my authors, and it's one that's been posed to me as well, did you get to have a hand in the design of what that new cover is going to look like? Which you said you're going to you're going to get me the new cover so I can feature that in the I, newspaper. I, yeah. So tell me, did you get to have a hand in it, or no, no? The publisher had the graphic artist create maybe a couple mock-ups. You pick one, or tell us how that process goes down. This was actually interesting because I had more just a, a I, just a little bit different management this time. The higher ups and and they very kindly ha- let me have a little bit more. Oh. input mm-hmm. um than last time but um it um uh part of it was done through uh, um artificial intelligence uh, tony yeah how yeah. about we talk a lot about that I mean, around here yes. artificial yeah intelligence. tell us about how that went down then uh well one thing i i thought that all you had to do was sort of like Wave a magic wand, yeah. and um, it would just create something like a right. wand. Yeah, and that's not true. I found out that you cannot create exactly what you want. For example, there's it, it's it's a um, it's a romantic the all hail queen of the freaks. Mm-hmm. It's a, a supernatural romantic thriller, mm-hmm. and so there's a, a young woman and a young man on the cover. And the young man, he had green eyes. And I said, um, oh, uh, I said, the, that character is Asian. You, uh, so the character has sure. darker eyes. And he said, oh, he said, well, uh, you know, the, our, our, the artificial intelligence program won't enable us to do that. So that has to be gone in. And it'll only take us so far. And then he has Gosh. to go in and, and do the finish fine tuning everything up. And sort of smooth over. But there's it's, a lot of fine tuning. This is so. fascinating to me. So this yeah. publishing house apparently now is, is, is using the option of artificial intelligence to help 
create what would at least be an earlier or a mock version of yeah. potential covers, I'm, I'm guessing here, by maybe in putting key terms and descriptions, and then it's creating exactly something. What they did. But you, as the actual creator, said this character really <laughs> wouldn't look quite like that. It should be this and this. And yeah. then the person that was in charge of the, the illustration or the, or the covers for this book publishing company said, ah. what we will do is... Don't worry about it for now. We'll get something, and then we'll go through. I have to go, and, and, and we'll do the fine-tuned details. Right, right. So, with, so hmm. the first draft I saw, you know, at first, it, you know, it looked all airbrush and it was glamorous yeah. and fabulous and that kind of thing. And then I looked at it and I thought, wait a second, <laughs> none, none of this is right. This. None of the characters yes. look right, and um, you know, uh, there is a. Uh, you know, as an as an author, I figure if I yeah. spend years developing my craft, yeah. then uh, surely I can put a cat on the cover. And of course, yeah. whenever people come, whenever I meet people sure. with signings or whatnot, yeah. the first thing they always see is the cat. So, but now so, this this cover was not this was not AI from no, the last time. No, it was not. Yeah, so it that's was not. And same publishing company. So even they are evolving and they're starting to to use some of these tools. Yes. But I, uh, if anybody is worried about losing their job yet, yeah, we're not there yet. I would not worry. <laughs> but the key with all of this is yet, and we won't go into this. We'll leave this to the Sam sure. and Tonys to discuss in their morning show. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, because the first it, draft uh, of All Hail Queen of the Freaks was. I mean, at first, you know, I, at first I was like, wow, that's yeah. so cool. And because it was all airbrushed and it looked, gl you know, yeah. you know, really fabulous. And but then all of a sudden I realized, wait a second, where's Chicago in the background? Right. This is like not, all these little details. Yeah. Were that this off. is not going to capture. That was off and, yeah. It, it, it was um, weird. Yeah. It is uh, just that that is a whole nother discussion, but it fascinates me. And again, we've all been on this platform in like the last couple of weeks because it keeps coming up, you know, so much uh, yeah, out it, there as well. It's not there yet. I I don't yeah. think I'd lose sleep over and it. And again, I, um, yeah. I just I know there's two schools of thought with artificial intelligence, you know, and, and basically robots and computer and software is creating and, and doing what would be human intellect and, and if the result is gonna be the same. The same thing would happen at times during the old the old school days and we'll bring up our, our author colleague friend Kate Collins. She told the story many times that she had done some historical romances, remember, and sure, then she did her flower shop mysteries. Yeah. And she said there was times when the illustrators or the graphic artists would send back a cover, and she would say they would have her characters. Like there was one where I just I remember she points out that it was set maybe kind of out in a prairie in the West, and she had this flowing gown with all this lace. And she said, but none of this is described like this. This is supposed to be a much more gritty pioneer setting. It's not, she wouldn't, my character would never be dressed in something like this, you know, that looks so soft and kind of more luxurious than what it was like to be as a pioneer woman on the elements. Yes. But the old expression is, and I know we've all heard this, you, um, Basically, right, about judging books by the cover, right? That's right. That's what sells. So if you can get them to pick it up, turn over the back flap, read a little bit, out, you're probably going to maybe get more of a sale out of it. So that's why these the graphic artists seem to know best. Artificial intelligence, I don't know. We'll see. It's a work in progress, as you as you mm -hmm. all say. I, how many pages is it? Do you have it memorized for how many pages it is? I do. It is Harry Potter length. So we're talking about 500 pages. The pa next one's quite, yeah. And paperback. It's paperback. It will right? be paperback uh, okay. with hardcover. You, you know how it is. Paperback first, hardcover to come later. Um, and it is interesting because we can talk on and on about the technology behind uh, the business of writing a book. But... In the end, um, when I really was, um, I always say one of the ways you can get rid of, of writer's block is just to entertain yourself, right? To entertain sure. yourself. And so I really started digging into the lore of yeah. Indiana. Uh, you know, there's a reason that uh, a lot of horror movie directors, you know, put their put their uh, feel, uh, their movies here. Uh, for example, I would just last night. If anybody's ever seen the uh, the kind of now classic TV show Supernatural, the the last uh, episode in season three takes place in in good old New Harmony, and of course, uh -huh. we all know Stranger Things yep. is set. Uh, they even show us a map. It's sure. set uh, an hour south uh, of Indianapolis, yep. which is where, uh, which is, it's basically presumably where Bloomington would be. Sure. So I really borrowed like a lot of the mysteries and 
uh, of the uh, yeah. of this area. And a lot of the experiences that I've had, um, for example, during my life here, um, you know, I've you know, I've you know, I really mm-hmm. borrowed that to make this. You know, it's a very spooky. Uh, it's it's a very spooky. Uh, book. The so. voice that you're hearing are author T. Harriman. Of course, maybe based downstate now, but also plenty of local roots and, and yeah, pl- spent plenty of time up here in northwest Indiana and still does, which is another thing. We, we should plan this out and there's you should actually come up this way for a book signing and an event. I so actually do have a plan. So. You, uh, yeah, so yeah. make sure you let me know so I can also tip off and let folks know you know, because we're, we're pitching this, but again, it makes it so easy. It's really just a couple of clicks away. It will be on Amazon, right? Yes, Barnes & Noble, uh, kind of like your usual suspects. Um, something that's exciting this time is that um, I am uh, taking my, uh, and again, talking about the business of writing, uh, you know, I've been you know, learning who Mm -hmm. the United States has reciprocal trade agreements with. And Mm -hmm. I am going to be advertising and selling these books in the UK, uh, Um, Japan, and Korea. And then, yeah, it's exciting. Wow, it is. And so after we've got the marketing fine-tuned with those three countries, we're going to move into other countries Mm -hmm. as well, too. Another another contemporary and a a favorite author friend uh, that's right here based in the area, Get a little further east to Laporte. Catherine Langwin is the one who did the yes. original *Romancing the Stone*, and and, of and she says I've the same her. thing. It's so fascinating when she sees her works also in other languages, because a lot of times that's the way it's going to be in a different format. Or folks are going to order it if they're over the pond, so that it fits whatever that they want to do for their own um, communication. Yes, I can. Um, now, I personally, I have a lot of training as an editor, so I'm able to convert this oh. book into. Um, UK standards, actually, that's something I'm going to be working on tonight, uh, of okay. UK standards of punctuation and spelling and word choice. But I do have a, a translator, and actually it's going to have to be double and triple checked so that, you know, it doesn't say anything that's weird or crazy or silly. Uh, now, but I, you, I do have a, a Japanese translator. You know what's going to come next, and this is this is a regular part of every single one of these Phil Potempa interviews. <laughs> Tony, what do I call my hard question? Oh, man, you're uh, Joan Rivers, uh, Larry uh, King. Yeah, uh, one, the one, at least uh, one uh, tough Larry King slash Joan Rivers type of a question. Is there one character or one scene or one part that was originally maybe going to be in there, but again, for length, or you second guess yourself and you thought, no, I'm not going to have enough time to develop this character. I'm not going to maybe, I'll, this scene's not going to work. And later you think, oh, you know, if I could go back, maybe I should have done this or done that. Anything that... Give us a fun fact of something like, well, you know, it almost had, or I, you know, fill in the blank. Oh my gosh, there's a ton of that's. Oh, that's. Hey, you know, <laughs> I, I've had a crazy life. I've seen my oldest child as an 18 month old on a 12th floor window ledge. I pulled had to pull him off oh a 12th floor God. window ledge. Um, you know, a, a yes. single mom of four. I've had a lot. You've of, lived it. You've lived. it. I have lived it. Yes. I have lived it, or it has lived me. <laughs> but um, but you know, so I, that's you know that's that's. Uh, you know that's uh, that's yeah. that's not that scary of a question for me, but I'm afraid the answer isn't that exciting. That's all right. I want to hear. Is there, uh, so there there's got to be some. Is there something in there that you were going to do or? Sure. All right. Well, this um, this all hail Queen, Queen of the Freaks takes place in a fictional uh, boarding school mm. for uh, you know kids of the rich and famous. Uh huh. And so one and and so everything is very. You know, everything is very politically correct. So instead of choir class, they have mm-hmm. solos together class because uh-huh. you don't want to drown anyone's individual voices, right? Uh-huh. So it's solos together class. And so <laughs> I had, I had uh, you know, made up a composition uh-huh. that was kind of like riffing off of, you know, how different things are for kids today versus yeah. when we were kids, sure. which was only, of course, a couple of years ago. But right, still, right. I like things, that. Yeah, yeah. things yeah. change quickly. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the more I thought about it, and I don't know, it was like four or five pages. And you Damn. know, when you have journalism training, yeah, and, and yep. yeah, and you're just you know where every word has to count, every sentence has to count, and move things along. It's it slowed it down too much. You just thought, yeah, yeah, that, it's too. Don't indulgent. want to take it off rail. I get too far into the weeds of the expression. That you use, yeah, or yeah, indulgent. Exactly. Is this more for me without carrying the story and the character? That, and that's so, exactly yeah. where I went with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that can that can certainly happen. Yeah, that's still a pretty good answer. 
sure that because it is it is difficult sometimes to sort of think what all should be in there and if something has to go and and again if you're working on deadline that can be even tricky. Um, the book title also is another question I like to ask. Did you have to do your share of Googling to make sure, okay, is this title already out there somewhere? Of course. Or can I have the rights to this? Uh, that was a process, right? Of course. Um, and that's the kind of thing that nobody teaches you yep. this stuff. You really have to learn by yourself. Right. You Google your own, um, you Google yep. y- yourself, your own pin name to make sure it's yep. not close to anyone else. You have to have a website. So you mm-hmm. want to make sure that when people, and my website is www.therriman.com. And okay. uh, and I wanted to make sure that I had an easy to remember website, all that yes. good stuff. So yes, absolutely, everything gets googled, and I know that sounds really, yeah. you know, really. Uh, oh, it does. That, you know, that, yeah. uh, conceited, but I mean, no, you know, you true. want people to be able to find you. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And now that we've teased it again, give us the, the title of the book. It is all hail queen of the freaks. And uh, so um, it's going on, it'll be available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble on July 15th. And shortly thereafter, it'll be on Amazon Japan, uh, Rakuten, um, and, you know, all the usual suspects in the, in Japan, uh, Korea, and the United Kingdom. And when you mentioned all those social feeds, uh, social media feeds and, and links, do you have them on your website too? People go to there. Does that direct them to find you? Absolutely. Good. So we'll and make sure we get that. That'll be there, our catch-all if we get that website. Give us the website again. www.tharriman.com. And um, and uh, to show you, I, I guess it, since we last chatted, mm-hmm. um, I was named one of the top 20 women in business for Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky. I was mm, the only artist. Uh, that was put on that list. And so, um, you know, if anybody has a question about mm-hmm. the business of writing or uh, or why I say that there's no such thing as writer's block sure. or um, uh, the um, – or the uh, white, the two uh, white ladies, or white yeah. that I saw at, at Oak Ridge Prairie, uh, the ghosts. Uh, you can ask me anything. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always happy to to answer. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. And this just means again, you need to come back up this way. It sounds You're like there's already some book signings and events in the works. Yes. So we will. Mag- uh, you know, I always think you would be great also for the literary tea that they do at the Lake County Library. Oh, so I'll have to ask. Yeah, I, I will make sure that we, we uh, connect with that as well. You're going to be hearing a lot more about our, our author friend, T. Harriman. and she'll be back up in our region again. In the meantime, you've heard the book of the title, which is... All Hail, Queen of the Freaks. And releases on... July 15th here in the United States. Everybody's looking for something to read for the summer. That is your summer read. We talk about it being for middle school uh, students, but again, it will appeal appeal to everybody. Yeah, there's certainly more sophisticated material in there. And if you are looking for, you know, an escape, um, you know, sort of a, a... a vacation on paper, it is the book for you. Absolutely. And again, this conversation will continue in my columns at the Post Tribune. So make sure that you stay tuned in ChicagoTribune.com. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our broadcast this week. I'm your host, Phil Patempa. Thank you for joining me.